Hello to everyone in the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral community and all of our friends. This is Father Jonathan. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to continue our reflection on the Psalms of Liturgical Worship, a series that we began not too long ago with the intention of hopefully building in us, cultivating in us a deep desire to connect to the Psalms, to have a better understanding of the Psalms that we use in worship, why they're used, where they're used, what they mean, what their significance is, and how they can help shape us also to hopefully build in us a desire to use the psalms in our personal worship as well. If we can better understand the ones that we use in the services, we can come to find ways of using ones that are not in the services as well, at least not in the services that we attend. And the next psalm that we recite in worship is Psalm 141. It shares many of the themes of our previous psalm of reflection, that is Psalm 140, which precedes it both in number and liturgical position. In today's reflection, we will continue to introduce themes that are significant to this psalm in particular, and we will introduce the psalm first and foremost and place it in its historical context, that is historically in the life of David, its author. We have noted before that psalms can become for us prayers that speak to our own experiences. Nevertheless, we ought not forget that these beautiful songs and are prayers written by real people, many by David and some by others. In a liturgical Psalter, as well as in the books of, book of Psalms in the Bible itself, you will find a verse of introduction that places the psalm in its historical context, or gives a little bit of information about how it was used liturgically in the Hebrew tradition, the Jewish tradition. Sometimes this will allow us to see during what episode in the life of the author, an episode often recounted in another book of the Old Testament or Hebrew scriptures, or some information like what festival it might be used in, and also the type of psalm that it is. This psalm is given the heading Inter Instruction by David when he was in the cave praying. Now, if we are not familiar with the life of David, recounted in the first and second books of kingdoms, as they're called in the Orthodox Study Bible or a Bible that uses the Septuagint, or first and second Samuel in the Western Canon Bible, and aside, these are the same books of the Bible, they just have different names in the Septuagint than in the Hebrew Bible. Uh, so same books, but they're given different names. The heading of the psalm places it in the context of David's time fleeing from Saul, the first king of Israel. In brief, in the time after the 40 year period when the Israelite people were wandering through the desert and after they had entered into the promised land, they did not have a king for the Lord was their ruler. They were governed by what we now call judges. But these were not judges as we understand them today, wearing black robes and slamming a gavel. They were more like regional, political, and military leaders, tribal chieftains perhaps. And after many generations, the Israelite people cried out to God for a king so that they could be like other nations. And although God warned them through the prophets about how disastrous this would be, he told his prophet Samuel to find a man who would be anointed king. Saul would be anointed and serve as the first king of Israel, but he would quickly come up short in his kingship and God would choose another to be king, David, the son of a shepherd. Before David would assume the throne, he would serve under King Saul, but his fame grew and Saul would become jealous and seek to kill David. Saul would pursue David until an instance in which David showed his pursuer mercy. This is the instance that the heading alludes to. In First Kingdoms 24, we see the scene played out. Saul enters a cave where David is hiding, unaware that David is there. David was close enough to kill Saul, but instead cuts a piece of his garment off in secret and showed Saul mercy, who then exits the cave. David then revealed himself to Paul, showing, Saul showing the piece of the garment that he had removed to show the king that he could have killed him, but did not despite all the evil that had been done to David by Saul. Saul repented of the evil he did to David and 
the latter is left alone. After the death of Saul in battle, David assumes the throne. All of this in one small line. This is another indication that we need to be reading our Bibles regularly. We need to know what's going on in the scriptures if we're going to live them. We know from this story that we need not to retaliate against those who wrong us. This is one aspect of the instruction that we are taking from this psalm. And that's just in the heading. In the days that follow, in the reflections that we have over the next few weeks on this psalm, we will be just thinking about other ways, other things that we can learn from this beautiful psalm of prayer that David did as he was being pursued by Saul. God bless you. We're here from you. We love you dearly. Don't hesitate to reach out. Remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channels. Follow us on social media, Facebook and Instagram. If you'd like to support our ministry here, there will be a link below. We would love to have you to do that. And most importantly, remember to attend church as you're able to and uh, stay connected through these different social media posts. You can remember to uh, send us a message on social media. You can leave us a message in the comment section. Uh, you can call us, you can email us, whatever you need. We love you dearly. Have a beautiful start to your week.